Have you learned the rules of Lorcana, either from my video or elsewhere, but still find them too abstract and or confusing? Let's put them into practice. Pete and Oswald have settled down for a nice game of Lorcana. We'll be looking over Oswald's shoulder for this one so we can get a feel for only being able to see our own hand. Pete is playing an aggressive Ruby Steel deck, while Oswald is playing a Sapphire Amethyst deck that wants to draw lots of cards. Oswald wins the coin toss and gets to go first. Because of that, he doesn't get to draw a card in his first turn. This is so that Pete isn't too disadvantaged for going second. Before turns actually start, both players can look at the hand of seven cards they draw and pick any number to mulligan. Oswald is going to put back Robin Hood Unrivaled Archer and Jafar Wicked Sorcerer since they're more expensive cards and he's looking for more cards he can play early. So he sets those two cards out in front of him face down, then draws two new cards from his deck. Once he's refilled to seven, he shuffles Robin Hood and Jafar back into his deck so he can possibly draw them later on in the game. Pete is happy with his opening hand and doesn't mulligan. It's now Oswald's first turn. Remember, since he's going first, he doesn't draw. It's only ready and set for just this turn. He drew another Robin Hood from the mulligan, so Oswald chooses to ink that card for the turn, revealing it to Pete to show it has a fancy flourish. Once it's face down, he exerts it to play Pascal, Rapunzel's companion. Pascal has one strength, one willpower, one lore, and an ability that gives him evasive if he has a friend on the field. Having run out of things to do, Oswald passes play to Pete. Pete, going second, gets to draw a card as normal. He inks Mickey Mouse, Brave Little Taylor, then plays Fire the Cannons to deal two damage to Pascal, which unfortunately banishes him to Oswald's discard pile. Back to Oswald, he finally gets to draw a card. He decides to ink Develop Your Brain, then play Aurora Regal Princess, hoping to shift Aurora Dreaming Guardian onto her next turn. Since Pete already used Fire the Cannon's last turn, it's less likely he'll have another one in hand to immediately banish Aurora. On Pete's second turn, he inks Simba Returned King and plays Donald Duck Boisterous Fowl. Back to Oswald, Aurora survived, thankfully, so he inks the Pascal he just drew and and exerts three ink to shift Dreaming Guardian onto Regal Princess. Since the ink was dry on Regal Princess, that means Dreaming Guardian can immediately act. So Oswald exerts her to sing Friends on the Other Side for free, letting him draw two cards. Pete doesn't like Aurora sticking around, so he has Donald challenge her, which banishes Donald. Then he inks Maleficent Monster's Dragon so he can finish the job with Smash. Both Auroras are banished to Oswald's discard. Oswald inks an Yzma Alchemist, then plays another copy of Yzma, and spends two ink to play one jump ahead, since he has no dry characters to sing it. The song lets him put the top card of his deck face down in his inkwell, which will put him in ink ahead of Pete. Pete inks another Simba, then plays Captain Hook, Captain of the Jolly Roger, which lets him put Fire the Cannons from his discard pile back into his hand for later use. Oswald finally has a dry character he can quest with, so he does so with Yzma, gaining the first lore of the game. Yzma also has an ability when she quests. Oswald looks at the top card of his deck, sees that it's another one jump ahead that he doesn't really want right now, and puts it on the bottom of his deck. With five ink, he can play another Aurora Dreaming Guardian without needing to shift her, and then he inks another Pascal to play Maleficent Biding Her Time. Pete would love to use his Fire the Cannons to get rid of either Yzma or Maleficent, but Aurora's ability is giving both of them Ward, so they can't be chosen except in challenges. So Pete challenges Yzma with Captain Hook, banishing Yzma and putting two damage on Hook. He then inks a Goon's Maleficent's Underlings so he can play a Dragonfire, banishing Aurora. A note, Ravensburger has these damage tokens to track damage, but personally I use D6s since they're both less fiddly and easier to see from across the table. Oswald knows Pete has fire the cannons in hand, so keeping Maleficent ready to protect her from Hook's challenge won't do much, so he quests with Maleficent, getting to three lore, then plays the Robin Hood he just drew, which, since Pete has more cards in hand than him, means he gets to draw a card. It's a magic mirror, which he might play next turn. Pete does use Fire the Cannons to deal with Maleficent, then quests with Hook for his first lore of the game. Then he inks another Donald Duck and plays Mulan Imperial Soldier. Now Mulan would be a problem for Oswald as she's strong enough to take out Robin Hood and survive, but luckily he just drew Let It Go. He exerts Robin Hood to play it for free, which puts Mulan into Pete's inkwell. Then Oswald plays and activates Magic Mirror, drawing into another Let It Go. 
Pete's not happy about losing Mulan, so he plays Mickey Mouse Musketeer Exerted since he's a bodyguard. He then quests with his damaged Captain Hook, going to two lore, and passes back to Oswald. Oswald draws Maleficent Sorceress, whom he plays, drawing him into another Maleficent Sorceress, which he also plays, drawing a flounder voice of reason, which he inks. He then has Robin Hood sing another Let It Go, inking Pete's Mouseketeer. Pete needs to get more on the board, so he plays Simba Returned King. He doesn't quest with Captain Hook, as he'd die to either of Oswald's Maleficents, so he simply passes. Oswald is feeling pretty comfortable with his board state, so he quests with everyone, bringing his lore to seven. He then plays another Robin Hood, drawing a Pascal, which he also plays. Pete challenges the exerted Robin Hood with Simba, then plays another Captain Hook of the Jolly Roger, taking back fire the cannons again, which he immediately plays to take out a Maleficent. He then quests with the damaged Hook, going to three lore. Oswald trades his other Maleficent into Simba to finish him off, then quests with Robin Hood and Pascal, going to 10 lore. He then plays the Aurora Dreaming Guardian he drew and passes. Pete is now in a rough spot. He's only at 3 lore, while Oswald is at 10, with more stuff on the board. There's little point in challenging, as Pascal has evasive, and getting rid of Robin Hood would require sacrificing both of his hooks, so Pete chooses to quest instead, going to 5 lore. He then plays another Simba, and passes. Oswald feels he's in the home stretch now, so he quests with everyone, going up to 15 lore. Pete now has to challenge, as Oswald has enough lore on the board to win on his next turn. To raise the stakes, Oswald plays the Maleficent biding her time he just drew, then spends four ink to exert the magic mirror, drawing one more card in Yzma, which he can also play. Pete swings Simba into Aurora, banishing her, then the damaged Hook into Robin Hood, followed by a Fire the Cannons to finish him off. He then plays Beast Hard-Headed to banish Oswald's mirror, quests with his remaining Hook to get to 6 lore, and hopes Oswald doesn't draw any more characters. Oswald quests with Maleficent, Yzma, and Pascal, going up to 19 lore. Yzma's ability reveals an Aurora Regal Princess on top, which Oswald leaves there. He then plays the Mickey Mouse Detective he just drew, putting Aurora into his inkwell, but also guaranteeing him one lore on his next turn. Pete knows he can't stop Oswald as he didn't draw a smash to get rid of Mickey, so he concedes. Oswald wins. If you have any questions about how a game mechanic works, or why a strategic decision was made, or if you think I made a foolish naive rules error, please comment below and I'll try to reply when I can.